Item Number SCP-3122 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Instances of SCP-3122 are to be stored in a Faraday cage shielded storage container when not being used for testing. Evidence of the existence of Elevix Electronics and any products produced by it are to be removed from public awareness using standard data censoring protocols. Description. SCP-3122 is a series of consumer satellite navigation systems produced by the now-defunct Elevix Electronics. The anomalous effects of SCP-3122 manifest when the following conditions are met. The currently active journey on SCP-3122 is estimated to take over three hours to complete. The vehicle in which SCP-3122 is situated has currently undergone at least two hours of the program journey. At some point following the two-hour mark, SCP-3122 loses its signal tracking. No specific cause for the loss of signal is required. Once these conditions have been met, following the loss of signal, SCP-3122 will connect to an unknown source from which it will begin receiving information. The vehicle in which SCP-3122 is installed, along with any occupant of the vehicle and SCP-3122 itself, will be translocated to SCP-3122-1. SCP-3122-1 is a topologically inconsistent pocket of space-time, which initially resembles the area from which SCP-3122 and its associated vehicle were removed. Once within SCP-3122-1, SCP-3122 will begin to relay instructions that are increasingly nonsensical, and SCP-3122-1 itself will begin to change both its layout and contents, with the severity of these effects increasing over time. After a period of time following the victim's entrance into SCP-3122-1, typically between 24 and 72 hours, the vehicle will re-enter standard reality at the final destination point of the original journey. SCP-3122 will be present within the vehicle, though any life forms will be missing. An investigation into Elevix Electronics revealed a number of consumer electronics developed by the company, many of which demonstrate anomalous properties. No record of the creation of the company or any employees working for it could be found. The registered business address for the company was determined to be a large warehouse containing numerous crates of SCP-3122 instances. Analysis of recovered security footage from the areas around the warehouse revealed repeated visits by a single individual, determined to be POI-30808, Jazira Masani. POI-30808 has previously been linked to various religious cults typically centered around minor anomalous objects. The last recorded sighting of POI-30808 was in 1996, following the mass suicide of one of the associated cults. A software update for SCP-3122 was developed and released, with the goal of disabling any devices onto which it was installed, and a recall order for all affected products was enacted. It is estimated that over 95% of the sold instances of SCP-3122 have been recovered or rendered inert. SCP-3122-1 Exploration On July 19, 2016, Permission was granted to attempt exploration of SCP-3122-1 to determine the nature of the anomaly and ascertain the possibility of recovering the lost civilians. A vehicle was equipped with an instance of SCP-3122, numerous recording and tracking devices, and piloted by D-Class Personnel D-99321 on a program journey that would take them through a tunnel sufficient to cause the loss of GPS signal two hours and five minutes into the test. Following are transcripts of the recovered recordings, starting immediately prior to the activation of SCP-3122. D-99 was instructed to continue describing his surroundings, even if contact with control was lost. He was otherwise not informed of the nature of the experiment. Okay. I can see the tunnel up ahead. Acknowledged. Maintain contact and keep us informed of any occurrences. What exactly are you expecting to happen here? Unknown. That's the point of this experiment. Uh-huh. I know you science types always write us off as idiots, but we aren't stupid. 
We always know when you aren't telling us everything. Proceed into the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. GPS signal lost. I guess we expected that, right? Approximately 30 seconds of silence. Note, contact with control was lost at this point, and not re-established. Hello? Guess I've lost you guys too. Well, nearly out of this tunnel anyway. Connection established. In 300 meters, turn left onto Via della Conciliazion. Weird. I don't remember a turn coming up, and... Is that Spanish? Turn left onto Via della Conciliazion. D-99 takes the turn as instructed. It should be noted that there is no left turn on the road exiting the tunnel, in which contact with D-99 was lost. Weird. I haven't seen any other cars since I left that tunnel, and... Hang on. There's another tunnel coming up. It, uh... It looks exactly the same as the last tunnel. The hill, and the rocks, and everything. Visual analysis of recovered recordings confirms an exact visual match between the exteriors of the first and second tunnels. Looks the same inside, too. And I haven't lost signal this time. And here I was hoping you were just sending me on a nice little road trip with no weird shit involved. Just realized I've been in this tunnel for about five minutes now. That seems weird. I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure there's no five mile long tunnels in Derbyshire. Still no other cars either. In one kilometer, accelerate to 180 kilometers per hour, then turn right onto. Then left onto Sanderson Road, then down onto Howling Void. Great. Now the satnav has gone nuts too. And why the hell is this thing in metric anyway? Accelerate to 180 kilometers per hour. You're the boss, insane computer. Though I doubt this bucket can even go that fat. D-99 is cut off as the vehicle rapidly accelerates to 180 kilometers per hour, forcing him back into the seat. Holy crap. I think the car is driving itself. The, the brakes aren't working. Holy shit. The vehicle suddenly makes a hard right turn, directly into the wall of the tunnel. It passes through the wall without effect, emerging in a similar tunnel before making a similarly sharp left turn. Oh god, I think I'm gonna throw up. Come on, stop you piece of- FUCK! The road seemingly drops away. The vehicle appears to be in a freefall for approximately 30 seconds. D-99 can be heard screaming. The vehicle suddenly appears to be on what looks like a desert road. No impact from the fall occurs. D-99 can be heard breathing heavily. Sweet. Fucking. <sighs> Jesus, what the fuck? Okay. Okay. I'm alive. I'm fine. D-99 looks around out of the windows of the vehicle. <sighs> now where the hell am I? Some kind of desert? I know there's nothing like this in Derbyshire. Can't see anything around besides this road. It's pretty hot here. I can already feel the heat coming through the windows. Continue for 12,000 kilometers, and then turn 470 degrees counterclockwise and remove your left arm. What? Fuck that. I'm going the other way. Looks like I have control of this thing again, and I'm sure as shit not removing many arms. D-99 turns the vehicle around on the road and begins driving. Okay, I've been driving for what feels like hours. Nothing has changed here. Can barely even tell if I'm moving. Just the same desert. Fuel gauge doesn't seem to be moving. And I haven't heard a peep out of this busted ass sat nav. I think. In 500 meters, remove 37% of your skin using the supplied flossing knife, and then surrender your soul. <sighs> Should have kept my damn mouth shut. D-99 visibly jumps in his seat, and then picks something up from in front of him. What the hell? Weird looking knife thing just appeared in my lap. Fuck this. D-99 opens the window and throws the knife out. A roadside agent will be along to assist you shortly. That sounds... bad. A high-pitched screaming sound can be heard in the distance. Cameras detect a shape ahead, which D-99 notices a few minutes later. The hell is that? Looks kind of like... a horse? A massive fucking horse with some giant guy riding it. I think it's headed right for me. 
Christ, it's tearing up the road, too. Going to have to turn around. I don't want to get anywhere near that thing. D-99 turns the vehicle around. As he begins driving in the opposite direction, a large equine creature with the torso and upper body of a humanoid growing from its back appears on the road, completely blocking it. It emits a high-pitched screaming sound, and D-99 swerves off the road. Shitting Christ, what the fuck, what the fuck, where the fuck did those assholes send me? Jesus fucking Christ. D-99 looks behind him. Cameras show that the entity and the road are both gone. Okay. Okay. Still alive. I guess no road is better than whatever the fuck that thing was. I guess I'm just driving through the desert now. Been driving for hours now. Clock still seems to be working, if nothing else. It's getting a little cooler, but the sun doesn't seem to be going down. Also, I just noticed that all the clouds seem to be in the shape of some symbol. Looks familiar. The satnav has been making weird sounds every now and then. It doesn't sound like words, just random vowels or something. E -e. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Anyway, I spotted something off in the distance. It looks like a building or something, maybe. So, against my better judgment, I'm going to head towards it. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. In 100 meters, stop at the crossroads, make a deal and surrender your flesh. God damn, I wish I could turn this thing off. We're not even on a road, you stupid piece of junk. D-99 strikes SCP-3122. No damage is caused. Okay, I don't seem to be getting any closer to whatever that is out there. And it's getting late. According to the clock, anyway. The sun still hasn't moved. Anyway, since you Foundation folks were actually kind enough to pack some supplies in here, I'm going to eat and try to sleep. Probably a terrible idea, but I can't keep driving forever. At the roundabout, take the 12th exit. The sleeper will awaken. Glorious. Reign supreme. And hopefully this thing will keep quiet while I'm trying to sleep. Oh, the uh, symbol in the clouds. It's the same symbol that's on this goddamn satnav. The company logo or whatever, I guess. They're still there, clouds in that shape, all different sizes. I'm sure that will mean something more to you Foundation eggheads than it does to me. He awaits. He awaits. He awaits. He awaits. Take the next exit. Blah. Get. Stupid machine. 6 a.m.? Huh. <sighs> Guess I wasn't eating during the night then. I... What the hell? D-99 can be seen looking out of the windows of the vehicle. External cameras show that a number of structures have appeared in the immediate area. No motion was detected since the vehicle was stopped. Not eaten, but it looks like I was towed. Where the hell am I now? Looks like some kind of town? Still in the desert, though. And I don't see any people around. Looks... old? All these buildings seem pretty worn down. Follow the road for 300 meters, then embrace oblivion. He will be nourished. Oh, there actually is a road. I'm going to look around a bit, see if I can find any people or signs that anyone has been here. D-99 tries to open the door, but it appears to be locked. What the... come on. Damn it. D-99 attempts to unlock the door, and tries opening the other doors and windows. All attempts at leaving the vehicle fail. God damn it. Can't even stretch my legs. When I get out of here, the first Foundation fool I see is getting punched in the face. <sighs> Road it is, then. Seems old. It's made of cobblestones or something. D-99 follows the road for approximately five minutes, passing through what appears to be a small town or village. No occupants are seen. All of the buildings are made of stone of a similar color to the desert sand. Bow down before, then take the next right. The road only goes right, you stupid piece of cra- Whoa. That's a big statue. As the car takes the corner, 
A statue of a bare-chested human male wearing an ornate headdress and carrying a staff comes into view, standing over the road. It is estimated to be approximately 90 meters tall. It was not visible before the corner. Lining the road before the statue is a series of smaller statues, averaging approximately 5 meters tall, each apparently depicting a different individual in a similar style of dress as the larger statue. The statue standing directly at the foot of the larger statue bears a notable resemblance to POI 30808. Bow down. Bow down. Bow down. Continue for three kilometers. Surrender. Starting to get the feeling this statue is the guy the Satnav has been babbling on about. He's kind of given me a bad feeling. I think I'm going to have to leave the road again. Not sure why that feels like the safer option here, but if the Satnav wants me to follow the road, I'm pretty sure I don't want to. D-99 drives away from the road. Huh. I could have sworn there were some mountains to my left, but they aren't there now. Probably wishful thinking to assume it was just a mirage or something. In 500 cubits, continue towards his embrace. Surrender your soul. Been driving for over an hour now, and I can still see that statue. It doesn't seem to be getting further away. Everything here has been getting weirder, if that's even possible. Those mountains have reappeared and disappeared twice now. The clouds seem to change suddenly, sometimes into that symbol, sometimes just random clouds. Pretty sure I saw some more buildings to my right at one point, but they aren't there now. Continue for 1,000 years, then turn left into his embrace. And this thing is really starting to drive me nuts. Tried to shut it up, but none of the buttons on it seem to do anything. Can't smash the damn thing either, despite a couple of attempts. He comes. Take the next exit. The hell? It's getting darker. A solar eclipse begins, rapidly reducing the light level. After 15 seconds, the sun is approximately 90% eclipsed by the moon. I've lost control of the car again. It's driving itself. The vehicle veers left, bringing a series of structures into view. A number of pillars in varying stages of decay surround what appears to be an open-air temple, at the center of which is a large stone sarcophagus. I don't like this. Nothing good ever happens in desert temples during an eclipse. Come on now. D-99 can be seen trying to force the vehicle to turn, with no success. It continues on course for the center of the temple. Surrender your soul. Surrender your flesh. Surrender your mind. Surrender. 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 SCP-3122 continues to repeat the word surrender. No. Come on, damn it. D-99 becomes increasingly frantic in his attempts to regain control of the vehicle, to no avail. He attempts to kick the glass from the windows, but is unable to break it. The vehicle comes to a halt directly in front of the sarcophagus, which is covered in a large number of carved symbols. Most prominently in the center is the Elevix Electronics logo. You have reached your destination. D-99 begins to speak, but is immediately cut off. Analysis of the video footage shows 13 frames of a substance resembling black smoke emanating from the sarcophagus and heading directly for the vehicle. It passes through the roof and windows before completely enveloping D-99. The smoke then recedes back into the sarcophagus. D-99 is gone. The vehicle reverses and drives away from the temple. Approximately 37 hours after contact with first lost with D-99, a GPS ping was received from his vehicle. It was found at the originally programmed destination. No trace of D-99 was found.